another video on Elasticsearch. My name is Ronak Vyas and this video is a collaboration with Programming Knowledge. In the previous videos, we talked about how Elasticsearch works, how we can use that to write queries and also search on using those queries. We also talked about how to index data to Elasticsearch using REST APIs. And we also talked about some nuances on how to search effectively using Elasticsearch. In this video, we'll start a completely new topic where we can use Elasticsearch with a programming knowledge. And my favorite choice of programming knowledge, to, programming language to use with Elasticsearch is Python. So let's start. The official client for using Elasticsearch with Python is something called as Elasticsearch Py. The name of the framework is Elasticsearch only in Python. So let's see what it is. So Elasticsearch Py is an official low-level client for Elasticsearch. The goal is to provide common ground for all Elasticsearch related code in Python. Because of this, it tries to be opinion free and very extendable. So Elasticsearch Py is a low-level client for Elasticsearch, which means that Elasticsearch DSL is another high-level client which you can use to search properly using Elasticsearch and Python. But we'll talk about Elasticsearch Py or the low-level client for now. So since it is a low-level client, it tries to be opinion free or doesn't have to be opinionated and can be used very effectively. And you have a lot of control over the Elasticsearch part of the code as well. So how do we start? We start with installing Elasticsearch. So let's go ahead and do that. I think I already have it, so it should show that satisfied. Yeah, so you can just go ahead and start installing Elasticsearch using pip install. Make sure you have Python 3 or greater. After that, we need to set up our Elasticsearch server so that our server is exposed on the REST API. So let's go to Elasticsearch folder, go to bin, and run the server. This might take few seconds to run. Let's just wait for that. Until then, this is the official uh, code uh, or the open source code for Elasticsearch Py. It is open source, so you can go and look at it. All the links that I show you will be there in the description below. And you can see the documentation to understand how it works, uh, see which version it supports. Uh, for example, you might have Elasticsearch 5.0, so you can use the 5.x uh, framework specifically uh, by using 2 and 5 as you can see and we'll be using this example or the example from the documentation uh, and to, and run it to see if it works properly for this video and in the next upcoming videos we'll actually go in deeper with the python client so let's wait and yeah i think we are done with the server and i've also set up a Jupyter notebook on which I'll be running the code. So let's get started. First, uh, since we're going to follow documentation, we need date time for now. So uh, we're using date time because we want to see how uh, Python can be integrated with, with Elasticsearch by using Pythonic functions uh, inside Elasticsearch queries and see if they run or not. So we'll use date time, but you can go ahead with any other example, uh, any other library in Python as well. Next, we need Elasticsearch, and we need the Elasticsearch class with the E capital. Let's run that, and we will run it properly. And now let's create an instance or an object of Elasticsearch, uh, which will have our server running. So let's see where our server is running before we do that. Usually it's written here, so it's published at 9200, port 9200, so. Yeah, as you can see, our server is up and running. So let's set up an instance with the name Elastics, yes. And yes, the instant instance is ready. Now let's index something, uh, just some random raw data into Elasticsearch, uh, dummy data. So let's call it, so we'll be indexing using query, right? So let's make a query now. 
and I'm currently following the official documentation so you can always refer back to the code to make sure that I'm not making any mistakes along the way and you can also play around with the example so that you get a better understanding of the Python client so let's say we have some random data uh, and the timestamp for this data will be gathered by date time dot now and yeah that sounds that looks about right now we have a query now let's index this using the index function so es dot index let's create an index so let's say my index as I'm following the documentation the doc type will be a test type it can be anything you like so don't worry about that let's give it an obscure ID uh, let's see what the documentation uses if it uses 42 let's give it a 42 as the ID uh, we'll be retrieving the uh, data that we have just indexed uh, in the next piece of code so we just want uh, to retrieve by the ID and next we have our query which is going to be query in the body and let's see what the errors are uh, authorization index is blocked it's read only okay my bad I think this index is already created so let's say my another index no problem and yeah it's good to go we have successfully created uh, another index and it has a test type it has a document uh, with an ID 42 now let's retrieve that ID so we use the get API to retrieve an ID or retrieve a data from Elasticsearch so we'll go ahead with that use the get function the index is going to be my another index I had to give it a really bad name because I already uh, made the my index before so I'm sorry about that we have the doc type which is the test type and id equal to 42 now this will uh, give us back a dictionary or a dict uh, which is similar to a json and we just want uh, the source of the json which contains this data any data and a timestamp we don't want the entire list but we can get that as well so let's just first uh, see what the uh, entire output looks like so let's call it output sorry yeah uh, let's see what output looks like so we have the index the type ID version uh, found it was able to find uh, a data which had an ID 42 and the source contains our final information which we need so let's output that so we have to print the output or we don't need to print it's Jupyter notebook so output and let's retrieve the source and wrap that around a string and yeah so as you can see we were able to retrieve the data which we indexed on Elasticsearch uh, using the Python Elasticsearch client this is a very simple basic example of how to use the Python client for Elasticsearch and as we can see it has a lot of other features as well so it translates basic Python data type to and from JSON uh, the date times are not decoded because uh, Elasticsearch uh, itself has its own way of dealing with date and time kind of uh, data uh, structures so uh, for that reason they are not decoded properly it automatically configures discovery of cluster nodes so we'll talk about this later in the upcoming videos it has persistent connections so we were able to uh, set up the server and run our code very easily it has load balancing across all nodes so when you are scaling up your data set and how you have a lot of data load balancing helps there uh, failed connection penalization we'll talk about this in the next video it has threat safety you don't have to be worrying about a deadlock or any other os or underlying issues and pluggable architecture so we were able to set up Elasticsearch uh, for a third party programming language very easily and all these features make Elasticsearch very easy to use with the Python programming language. In the next video we'll go a bit deeper into how to use 
the Python client for Elasticsearch. Thank you.